I'm Robert Doring and I'm the concept and level designer for I'm Still Here. I'm Still Here is a uh, 2D platformer puzzle game that's being developed in Unity uh, and the prototype is being developed in Flash. So I'm Still Here is a game about a boy named Simon who's been in a terrible accident. Um, he's completely paralyzed and in a coma and the doctors just declared that they don't even know when he's going to even wake up. Because the game revolves around kind of him conquering his fears and his insecurities, we, for the uh, actual level design itself, we decided to take our cues and inspiration from games like Super Metroid, Fez, and Limbo, which are all platformer games and, and also puzzle solving games. But what good about them is that they're all heavily story and theme based. They all have levels and puzzles that are based off of the overall game concept but also the uh, actual level concept itself. So uh, even uh, you know in, in uh, Super Metroid an ice level will be very blue, white and uh, gray and the puzzles are also kind of uh, reflective of the fact that it's supposed to be an ice level. Hi, I'm Greg Downey and I was a project planner and level designer on I'm Still Here. For this project we had a tight uh, schedule. We had our first team meeting on the 10th of February and by the 20th of April we were due to have a prototype submitted. On the 14th of March we had fi uh, finalised the concept and created a video pitch and submitted that for the competition. During this time period we assigned each other different tasks over the course of the project and assigned different team leaders each, uh, each week we had for a different meeting. My name is Max and I'm one of the artists on the build of I'm Still Here, the 2D game. First of all we had to come up with a style. We decided to go with something minimalistic and quite dark. We, just, we decided this would be good in order to keep the scariness level of the game quite high. Uh, we decided to use quite a simple colour palette, usually only using one or two, sometimes three colours if necessary. Once we decided on the theme for the game, the next stage was to start storyboarding. What this led us to do is create some basic scenarios for the game which would give us an idea of what characters and what different environments to create. So what we did is we got some paper and we basically started sketching some ideas of different environments ranging from things with large expanses to discover and other things which are very small and a bit more intricate. So the next stage of design was to actually get started with the proper artwork for the game. Uh, so what happened was Cameron sent me in some character designs, uh, just some rough sketches, so I brought it down and I started expanding all of the creations that he made. Uh, I looked into different styles of hair, eyes, clothes, and then I started to really get a, really, a good character in order. Um, having a good character was a good basis to building a new environment, so along with the environment I started making um, different assets which would be puzzles such as catapults. Um, we also decided to have the foreground in focus and the background very out of focus, focus using a blur. Uh, what this did was created, and I created an appearance that the character was very in focus and very close to the user that was playing the game. So once we had all the artwork in place, the next stage was to get this onto the computer in order, to, in order for us to be able to make it into a game. So what I did was I got all the artwork, scanned it into the computer, and started creating masks on Photoshop and Illustrator, and recreating all my graphics. And very quickly, it was noticeable that it was much better, much realistic, more realistic game theme, and uh, this worked really well. When I put it into Photoshop, especially the character, I'd break it down into arms, hands, feet, legs, and head in order so I could move it around when it gave us the de so that the developers could move it around when they brought it into Unity. Um, all in all, this is quite simple and it was quite a fast part of the project. Uh, for the level design, we kind of went with uh, themes based on, uh, as I said earlier, fears uh, for the 
first level we really went with loneliness. The fact that Simon is stuck, that he, if he fails, there'll be no coming out of this coma. Even though he is stuck, he can still hear outside voices. There's stimuli from the outside. Like voices were sort of echoing, echoing voices. That's what Simon, what Simon, Simon fears the most is going to happen if uh, he doesn't succeed.